So you abruptly left the porn industry in 2014. Was there anything specific that happens that made you just kind of drop everything? Um, that was when I had my saving experience in church. I was going through a, a horrible, horrific, um, abusive relationship. And, um, I was basically in the middle of getting out of it and then finally out of it. And like, I had this like draw to this guy that was, he was a complete narcissist and, um, just asked God to like remove me from that relationship. And that day I got saved, it was like, never, never thought about him ever again. It was just amazing. No, Tell me a something little, I can never explain. Tell me a little bit more about like being saved. Like, what do you mean by that? What was the exact like scenario there? Well, like back then I'll, I'll just say like, now I have two, I have different views on what's being saved and what isn't saved. Like back then it was like pulling the veil from my eyes, making me see the world in a different light that I didn't see it before, you know, pulling me like out of the porn industry and seeing like all these things, like well, I would walk out of the house and I would not walk out of the house without full on makeup, you know, showing cleavage, showing my belly, wearing high heels. Like I had to be that porn star look that that was like me all the time, bleach blonde hair, everything. And then when I got into the church, it was, it was like, um, totally different. Girls couldn't wear jeans. Girls had to wear skirts. You couldn't cut your hair, couldn't dye your hair. Um, you couldn't show your shoulders. You couldn't show cleavage or wear really tight clothes. It was extremely strict. So that, that was my view of, of being saved, you know, not, I stopped swearing. Um, I started going to church all the time. Started reading the Bible all the time. It was a totally different experience. But now what I view as say, being saved now is completely different than what I saw back then. Yeah. So you joined a Pentecostal church, which is, like you just said, very conservative. Um, you talked mm -hmm. about no alcohol, skirts below the knee, you know, not bearing the shoulders. Um, there's a lot of denom denominations of Christianity that don't have those kinds of extreme rules. So what was it about the Pentecostal church specifically that made you gravitate towards them? So, um, my parents' house where, where uh, my parents live across the street was the church I got saved in because my sister went to church there. So that's where I learned, you know, the whole Pentecostal way was, was mm. in that church and it was uh, United Pentecostal and it was extremely strict. Um, I had gone to a couple other chur churches. They weren't as strict, but you know, they would constantly be preaching down on gays and, um, uh, a lot of, a lot of the, you know, the going out to bars is a sin, you know, being gay is a sin, like all these things, which absolutely like literally made my stomach turn. It was, mm. it just disgusted me the how bad. Cause it was like, you know, I have attraction towards women. So, so sitting here telling me that, you know, I'm going to hell for my attraction and then watching gay people walk into the church and literally walk right back out because the pastor's preaching against gays. Like it just disgusted me. So, right. you know, it's like each church is going to have their own restrictions, whether it's going to be on clothing or, you know, drinking alcohol or being against, um, you know, gays or whatever. There's always going to be something there in each each world of, of religion mm -hmm. that, that, I, that I've ever seen. You know, maybe there's more right. out there, but... <laughs> So you, you said you faced a lot of judgment, um, from the people in your church. Uh, what did that look like? Oh my gosh. Um, so the church I was pastoring, I had, you know, tons of people that would come into the church that, you know, didn't judge me. You know, you can come into my church with full on piercings and tattoos and everything. And they, those people knew, like I took them as they are not, it didn't matter. You didn't have to dress up to come through the doors. You could be, you could come as you are. Um, it was when I went to other places, like I would go to other churches while I was a pastor and just kind of sit in the congregation and listen and just the judgment of people. Cause I was very, I I'm, I'm very well known around here and people knew who I was. So it was, you know, like people would say hi and be all smiley to my face. And then all of a sudden, you know, they turn around and then they're like, Oh my God, she's a porn star. She's a girl that had sex on film. And you know, it was just, it was terrible. Like I, um, my skirts, sometimes they started judging me by the, you know, how, how tight my skirts were. And so it was just every little thing, you know, they were just little nitpicking on every little thing that I was doing. 
Mm. So you, when you joined the church, you didn't like just become a member of the church. You became like a pastor. So, so what motivated you to take that, like to take the stage basically? Um, my ex was, uh, pastoring a different church and he got, um, his church taken away from him when we started dating because he was dating a porn star. (laughs) So, um, that was more of his dream and his calling, I would say. Mine was, I love to help people. You know, my whole pastoring experience, um, I would put 40 hours a week into this place and, you know, I never got paid for it. It wasn't that type of church at all. Neither one of us got paid. We did it out of helping people and the love for people. So that was my drive. My drive was, you know, helping people and seeing the difference changing in people. What I didn't like about it was, you know, having church members pick apart each other and -hmm. judge each other for their sins. Once everybody finds out about it, it was like this little gossip community. Yeah. That's kind of almost inevitable in any like kind of tight knit community. Right. I mean, people just can't help it. Did you, when you were pastoring, did you talk a lot about your, your past in porn? Like, did you, did the church kind of use you as an example about being saved from like a sinful industry at all? Um, it definitely did. They, they, uh, you know, that was a lot of, a lot of the reasons why the people loved me so much is that they, you know, they saw that I went from one extreme to the next. Um, but it wasn't the focus of it. You know, like when people come into and I would preach, I would preach on depression. I would preach on so many different things, even stuff that I didn't even have any experience with. I would research different topics and preach on other stuff. Right. Right. Um, so has the experience, your experience in church, like changed your views on pornography? Oh, my views are completely changed. I, um, you know, being in church, I was starting to see myself become judgmental towards people, you know, and I didn't like that. I didn't like how it was changing me. You know, I got, I got so, um, obsessed with the fact that I was showing something like my shirt would be like, like this. And I would be freaking out and like, want to wear a scarf, you Mm -hmm. know, because I wanted to just be covered up. I felt so ashamed and I'm, and I'm like, this can't be right. You know, this can't Mm -hmm. be what God wants for us. We don't want us to be ashamed. We were born into this world naked, you know, so it shouldn't matter. Uh, Being naked shouldn't matter to anybody because that's how we were born. That's how God made us. Mm -hmm. So it definitely, there's, there was a lot of stuff that made me change because I just, I was this open person that just loved life, was happy and everything. And then I got to a point where I was just listening to sad, depressing, um, Christian music and just becoming judgmental. And I didn't like anything about that at all. Right. It's interesting how it's like kind of these two extremes, right? I mean, you, when you were in porn, you said you couldn't leave the house without full makeup, cleavage, belly shirt. And then when you were in church, you like had to have everything totally covered up. It seems Mm -hmm. like for me, and, and I guess we'll, we'll know more at the end of your story, but like, I think you, like so many of us are always trying to find that, like that middle road, right. You know, but like, sometimes we're just pulled to these extremes. Like I'm definitely somebody who's who's always fighting to, to be in the middle. And I, I definitely get pulled in, you know, extreme this way, extreme that way. Um, do you see that that's kind of your journey too, like finding that, that peaceful middle road? That's where I'm at now in my life. It's like, I've seen the full on side of porn. I've seen the good, the bad and the ugly with porn. And I've seen the same thing when it comes to religion. So now Mm -hmm. I see myself like, I'm right in the middle. I, you know, I only shoot with uh, my husband and, you know, my porn life is healthy. It's not, you know, I'm not having sex with somebody that I didn't want to have sex with. Mm -hmm. And with church, it's like, I go to church when I want, I can pray when I want. I still have a strong relationship with God and I still believe 100% God loves me as he does everybody else in this world. You know, I don't, I don't have that. um, You know, I'm not, all in on one and all in on the other. It's like, I'm right in the middle and I'm, I'm like happy. I'm, I'm good where I'm at. 